Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. I want to read today from Your Father Loves You by James Packer. J.I. Packer, some of you will know that name. Uh, he was a professor of theology at Regent College, Vancouver, a writer of many, many books, and uh, one of my favorite theologians, to be sure. A humble man, a knowledgeable man, a scholar, and at the same time, very uh, able to sort of strike a, a chord with just anybody and everybody in the way that he would talk about God. And his book, Knowing God, continues to be one of my very favorites of all time. Um, look at what he says about this daily devotional, though, right here from the inside to the reader. He says, uh, supposing then that this book is now yours, what should you do with it? Don't, I beg you, treat it superstitiously as if it were verbally inspired. It isn't. <laughs> Isn't that great? He goes on to say, these droppings from my head and heart shall be your starting point, not your resting place. Use them as a springboard or trampoline before the Lord. Bounce on them, bounce off them, and see how far and how high your Heavenly Father lifts you and enables you to go. I just think that's so great. I want to read uh, a writing called Family Provisions, and uh, it's a, about a month or so into this particular daily reader. He quotes from Matthew 6, 30, which says, If God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? In Matthew 16, 19 through 34, Packer says, Jesus, and you can read that on your own here in a little bit, but Jesus is speaking out against worldliness. So that's Matthew 6, verses 19 through 34. That's kind of the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. You're familiar with that, I think. On the positive side, what he is saying in these verses is, live by faith. We tend to think that living by faith means operating in the Lord's service without any stated visible means of support. <laughs> but when Jesus spoke of living by faith, what he had in mind was acting as though God's promises were certainties, as the great heroes of the faith did. And you can read about them, by the way, uh, those great heroes of the faith that he refers to in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, there's 40 verses, I think, there that just sort of the hall of fame of faith. Uh, and it, it's just a great, great read. Abraham looked forward to the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God, verse 10 says in that passage. He looked forward. In other words, Abraham, who lived before the time of Jesus, looked forward to the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. In other words, his eyes saw beyond the limits of this world and this life. And that's a great way of saying it. I wonder, <clears throat> are we so trapped in our little slice of space-time history that not only do we fear everything that's going on in this world, not only does it make us angry and upset and all that sort of thing, and we obsess of it, over it, but does it maybe reveal what we're really worshiping as well, what we're putting all of our stock in, in, what we're counting on the most. I think sometimes the things that we fear and the things that make us angry reveal more about what we're worshiping than anything else. Because we've been called to his rest and we've been called to a dual citizenship, but our first, our first citizenship is in the kingdom of, of God. And we just happen to live around the earth. Um, and we're, we're here for his glory and for his purposes and to join him in, the, in his mission, uh, redeeming whatever bits and pieces of this world we can help be a part of redeeming, you know, and, and, and bring glory to his name uh, and love our neighbors, whether they look like us or think like us or believe like us or vote like us or anything. So there's all of that, you see, to be that surprising group of people that begin to reflect the image of God, uh, that, that God is restoring in his people. I love this. Anyway, uh, 
Abraham looked forward to this future city, but he treated God's promises concerning it as certainties. Moses, Packer says, chose rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin, because he considered the abuse suffered for the Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. He looked forward to the reward. That's in verses 25 and 26 of Hebrews 11. Again, a great chapter to read. Looking to the reward, to the glory that was to be because God had promised it. He was prepared to endure the abuse which came his way because of his commitment to God's cause. And again, it's about it's about seeing our lives as belonging not to ourselves. And you see, when that, that's so hard. That's just a completely different way of thinking. In this world in which we live right now, apart from God, everyone thinks of their life as belonging to themselves. And so anyone that, that does anything to them that they don't have to like, they'll take umbrage with it and they'll get angry and they'll, you know, uh, or they'll be offended on every turn in life. Uh, not to mention they'll be fearful at every turn of life. Not to mention uh, their soul will just burn out because we weren't created for that. No, 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 no. I love this. Moses chose to endure the abuse which came his way because of his commitment to God's cause. Love this. These and others lived in terms of the invisible realities which God had set before them by promise. Thus they modeled for us the life of faith. And that's so true. It's a, it's a great chapter, by the way, when you look through Hebrews chapter 11. I mean, there's some people in there that you go, yeah, but that person fell down and that person had doubts. And yeah, that person uh, did bad things. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, but that's because the salvation that God offers us, it's not a performance-based salvation. It's, it's salvation by grace through faith. And, and we receive that as a gift from God, which is so beautiful and so wonderful and awe-inspiring. Jesus called his disciples men of little faith because they worried about things in the future. By inference, men of mature faith would not be anxious about such matters. They would reason, God is our heavenly father, and he has promised to provide for all our needs. And you hold that all together, and it sort of guts fear, doesn't it? All of a sudden, you're Paul and Silas in a prison cell, and you start singing at midnight. <laughs> That's what's amazing to me. We have complete confidence in that promise, Packer says, and determine our purposes, policies, and priorities. Love that alliteration. Let me say that again. We have complete confidence in God's promises and determine our purposes, policies, and priorities accordingly. Amen. What are the things hoped for? and the things not seen, about which you have full assurance and conviction. And here he's pulling from Hebrews 11, verse 1. Praise the Lord for his tender mercies, for his lavishing grace, and that all of that has been poured out on you and poured out on me this day. Amen? Let me pray for us. Lord God, I pray that you would restore to us the joy of this salvation that you've given to us. Help us to glory in you, Lord, and in your grace and your mercy. Help us to find our souls flourishing um, because we're delighting in you and delighting in your word and in uh, your word as it reveals your wisdom, your ways, and your will to us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, um, I pray that you'd uh, take the scales off of our eyes that we might see uh, in uh, just brilliant, lum the luminous brilliance of your, of your grace toward us and, and how much you delight in your children. And help us to delight in you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. 
For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey. Thank you.